can't accept the loss, I'm hard headed. There's a little bit of madness to my method. Many falling off that fine line that I'm treading. I risk anything to be great, and I'm not letting nobody rob me of my victory. Number one, that's what I'm meant to be. When by any means, only thing that makes sense to me, I can make nice or make history. I got that dog in me, yeah. Turn me up. Big energy, got the crowd going up. I got that dog in me, yeah. I don't need no one, no one. I got that dog in me, yeah. I'm talking all bite, no bark. I could rip your squad up. I got that dog in me, huh? So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? I told him move over. Enough of that mediocre I've been. The man says cruising around in the stroller. I got ice in my veins like a cut in Minnesota. Why not show you how I'm built? Come a little closer. A lot of heart, been smart, aura got a glow. We can restart, give head start, still get the same result. I'm about mine. Don't you get it confused? I'm a win, win again. Yeah, that's all that I do. I got that dog in me, yeah. Turn me up. Big energy, got the crowd going up. I got that dog in me, yeah. Any up. I don't need no one, no one. I got that dog in me, yeah. I'm talking all bite, no bark. I could grip your squad up. I got that dog in me, huh? So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? They don't get it. I'm different. I'm the type to break through the door. Tear down the walls. Start up a wall. They don't get it. They don't get it. They ain't clear. I got that dog in me, yeah. Turn me up. Big energy, got the crowd going up. I got that dog in me, yeah. Any up. I take on anyone. I don't need no one, no one. I got that dog in me, yeah. I'm talking all bite, no bark. I could rip your squad up. I got that dog in me, yeah. So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? This material is property of the Minnesota State High School League. No downloading, saving, or archiving of this production is permitted. Coming up next on QCTV Sports, it's the Section 4A Championship. It's Andover versus Anoka, and I'm Pete Anderson alongside Joe Rulin. Joe, this game tonight features two tough, fierce rivalry uh, opponents, and they travel all the way up here to North Branch to make this game. Tell me what is going to be the difference between these two teams as they face off for the third time this season. As much as they like to score, and they can run it and they can juice when it comes to scoring at ease. It's going to be the defensive play, I think. Who's going to try to shut down the three-point effectiveness? And as we saw with Anoka, they shut down that big attack inside versus Centennial defensively. Andover, as well, will like to get out there and play some defense as both of these teams come in with aggressive marks. For Andover, 23-4, and four, and of course, for Anoka, 17-11. and 11. With, with Anoka and Andover, both of them very senior-heavy, very senior-led. What is that experience to this point with the, the time that they put together to this point 
going to mean when they try to get punch their ticket to the state tournament. I think you'll see some poise on the play and staying, staying with the process that each of these coaches have put in place for one another. Andover has won the last five matchups, but I'll tell you, this is the playoff and section tempo and that cadence is so different. That's why that senior leadership will help tonight. Should be a good one. We're really looking forward to it here on QCTV Sports. Stay with us. It's coming up next on QCTV Sports. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Goal. 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 Yes. Yes. The Huskies win their first state championship. Welcome inside the Fieldhouse here at North Branch High School. I'm Pete Anderson alongside Joe Rulin, bringing you this Section 7-4A championship matchup between the Anoka Tornadoes coming in against the number one seed Andover Huskies. Joe, this is already an electric atmosphere. We've got a full set of Andover fans behind us. We're staring at a full set of Anoka fans across from us. How, how, how can we get this environment to, or the game to match the environment right off the, right off the jump? Well, you know what, you're gonna see both teams kind of play what they do well. And one thing is for both of these teams lately, batteries included. They like to play defense, and that batteries included component has really separated them from the pack. For the Huskies, they've only allowed 50 points a game uh, against uh, defensively uh, against many of the other teams. And again, a mark of 23-4. Looking forward to seeing the poise and the calmness of these two teams. We, we talked about it in the uh, the intro, but the the seniors of this team, uh, Apinga, Frecking, and Lackanen, Shoknek, are are all. Uh, members of the Anoka team that, that lead them both in spirit and on the floor and scoring, rebounding all of those key contributors. And on the same thing on the Andover side, it's the four starters, uh, Voller, Morland, Morgan Miller, Emma Frost, Piper Engleby, joining Lacey Apple. Who is, who's gonna be able to bring that extra amount of juice, as you like to call it, here to this game tonight? You got the core four, obviously, for the Huskies. They average double digits. Meanwhile, for Anoka, three players that are gonna have to line up. You've got Kuyan along with Apinga. Apinga, 16 points a game. Maddie Frecking, she's 15 a game. Lackanen at 11, and 11 boards a game. And uh, the other that you'll see many much from uh, here as well uh, will be uh, Ieni as well for the Huskies. Meanwhile, they got the core four. They'll punch it through. You got Piper Engelby. She comes in. Head look there at the head coach, Blake Nichols. Engelby comes in averaging 13 a game. Miller at 13 a game. Emma Frost, 12. Anna Voller, 18. And they're led at point by Lacey Heppel. Head look at coach and head coach for Nick Novak, fifth year with the Tornadoes. His 17th year overall in coaching. We are just about underway. We've got Miller lined up uh, against Lackanen uh, for the Tornadoes. This one is about underway. Opening tip goes to the Huskies. Baller picks that one up and hands off to Heppel as she moves right to the top of the key, guarded by Kuyan. Gives off for Engleby and then into the corner. Right away, down low into Miller. She tries a hook shot, too strong off the back iron, rebounded. By locking in, here comes the Pinga and the Tornadoes. Tried to put that shot right up again, get the arms up and defended Miller on that inside jump. Frecking from the wing, goes to the baseline, defended by Engleby, backs her down, goes up with the right hand, too strong, and Engleby with the rebound. She comes the other way, Heppel this time, right side entry, dishes back for Engleby. Down low again and off the mark. That pass from Heppel to Miller, the first turnover of the night goes to Andover. Miller hustled down, hustled down really quickly and got that position down low in the block. A little pressure here for the Huskies on the uh, press. Tornadoes break that press, give to Frecking, goes down low underneath Miller, and the first points go to Frecking. Converts on that opportunity with the field and the court there a little bit more wide, able to get it inside to Frecking for two. Baller, her first touch, she gives a pass. Miller has to get shot from the outside by Engleby. And that is something that the Huskies are concerned about. 11 for 66 from three-point land their last two match their last two games. Kuya works with the left hand right down the middle through Broadway and defended well by Miller. She grabs the rebound, starts it up, go, brings it all the way herself. Breaks on at the arc. 
Back out to Miller. She can shoot it. She decides to put it on the floor. Dishes out for Frost. Emma Frost goes baseline. And back out for Miller. They slow it down. 20 on the shot clock for the Huskies. Engelby defended by Frecking. Goes to Heppel in the corner. Frost from the wing. Shot, and it's good. Emma Frost with the first points for the Huskies. Fresh by Frost from the outside. She converts her first three. A 3-2 lead here early for Huskies. Locking in, goes down the baseline. Swing pass around the baseline for Frecking as she works it in and gets the points to drop with her second shot of the evening, and she's two for two. Gets herself, works that baseline, and getting the matchup she likes with that size. Handoff for Engelby. Switch leaves Heppel wide open in the corner. She shoots it, goes off. That's glass. a bank. That's got to be an extra point, a four pointer, a bank, three ball, corner pocket. And she has been, she was forced to shoot quite a bit more than she normally does against Blaine on Saturday. This time she keeps that streaky shooting alive. Apinga from the left wing, she answers and puts the tornado back up by a score of seven to six. Bam, that's her 101st three-pointer made in her career. We may have to name her three, point, three Apinga. <laughs> I think that's gonna be the name tonight as she hits her first. Voller defended tightly by Apinga. Frost now on the wing, gets past Frecking, goes in, draws contact, no call. Apinga with the rebound. And the Tornadoes will slow it down. Apinga up top to Kuyan, works down the right side. Frecking will work right down again to the hoop and is up and in. That little runner, she's backing down Engelby and has six points already. Yep, they're going to have to come back down, maybe do some bracketing defensively to get that ball out of her hand. Heppel gets through traffic, dishes to the open. Frost on the left wing, same spot. This time she's not as pure, but it still goes in. And the Huskies will call a timeout right out of the gate here as we're tied at nine. Boy, the difference of uh, postseason basketball versus regular season beat. The timeout right now, 14-24 to go in this first half. Tied 9-9. Andover wants to get in and make some adjustments early inside in that lane against Frecking as she's got six. Yeah, absolutely, you're gonna have to see that. Uh, you, these two teams have faced each other twice already this season, Andover winning both of those handily. Yeah. The adjustments had to be made on the Anoka side, now it's An Anoka, or Andover's opportunity to see what they're going to do to change what they what their previous game plans were and how they're going to adjust that. Yeah, the first matchup for uh, Anoka is that they had Frecking just four points in that game in their first meeting. The second game, Apinga was out uh, with an injury, so she missed that one altogether. But in that game, it was Frecking who put up 15, some big numbers, and double digits on boards. And you had a chance to talk to head coach Nick Novak of the Tornadoes, and you know he he shared with us how. This is uh, the healthiest they've been all season. They're, they're bringing their full squad, their full uh, their full group together. As Drew Peterson on now on the floor has a good look, but goes strong over the basket. Voller the other way. Voller drops. Frost will shoot it again. Heat check time. Rebound comes out to Frecking, and it's going to be a foul called on Engelby. She doesn't like the call, but the official right there. Get a look here inside the three, the rebound, and now trying to wrestle it free, and it's a grab on the arm. First uh, team foul of the game here for Andover, first on Engelby. And some uh, full court pressure here by the Huskies. A pingo will bring the ball up. Andover's pressure falls back. Frost meets her just outside of the three-part arc. A pingo tries to use a screen instead. She hesitates, it's a double dribble and a turnover. Coming the other way. Turned that hesitation into a stop or a stall and then a dribble again, which caused that double dribble. So a turnover there for Anoka. Let's see if Andover can cash in. Not it up 9-9. Heppel in charge of the bringing the ball up, ball handling duties. Frost with the crossover, works to the left, off the glass, too strong. Doesn't get the bounce and it's Frecking now coming back up. And she works to her left. Works back, Engelby down, goes up with the left and. Well, you can see that was coming. They cleared it out, gave her the lane, and let Frecky walk it down against Engelby. Now with eight here in the first half for Frecky. Eight points, as you mentioned. Heppel goes up with the shot. She draws the foul. 
I believe that's going to go against Diani. And it'll be Lacey Heppel at the line looking to tie this one up. Got the arm, or maybe they'll call part of the body. So Heppel goes to the line. You mentioned postseason, things change. It's, it's, you have hey, a great record for Andover, 23 and 4. They captured the Northwest Suburban Conference with a record of 18 and 1. Heppel hits that first. And uh, they are averaging 64 points a game, yielding just 50 a game. That's one of the top uh, in uh, throughout the state, and some great defense there for Andover. But You've seen it here, Heppel has to be more involved. She's already got a total of four points after that made three in the free throw. One for two for Heppel as it's a one point lead for the Tornadoes, Apinga. Pressured by Heppel, gives the ball up for Drew Peterson. Peterson tries to dish it down low and a turnover as Voller stole it. Engelby, right wing met by Frecking, goes up top for Miller. Miller has some space to get around Diane and instead she gives up. Engelby works at the elbow, now gives for Ellie Fields, junior on the floor, top reserve. Shot from Heppel is looked to be partially blocked. Baseball pass ahead for Apinga. She gives back for Peterson for three. No good. Oh. Miller with the rebound. I like that fast break, a long pass. Apinga pitches it back out for the three attempt. Huskies get the board. Dishes, and now it's in Engelby's hand. A switch there with Heppel. Back and forth, her and Engelby. She goes off the glass and gets the roll. And Piper has her first basket of the evening. Good drive. Hey, she wanted to get to the lane. She says, enough with me getting taken downside into the lane and worked. I'm going to get my points, and she did. Apinga works to the right through the lane, dishes off for Lackanen. Lackanen now frecking, coming through the lane. Too strong, Ianni right there, and the putback for Deborah Ianni. Ianni picks up the loose change, takes it, and deposits it to the bank for two. Engelby from the wing, bang! <laughs> A big basket there for Piper Engelby. She's got one from inside, one from out, and five points here tonight. Gives the Huskies a lead of two and another steal down low. This one by Voller. Voller still looking for her first back is basket. She gets a runner and that one goes in. Patented inside shot there for Anna Voller. And she's on the score, to score sheet. She takes the turnover coast to coast with that beautiful floater and cashes it in. Four point lead now for Andover. Cracking stops and pops and she hits. She'll step out and hit that every once in a while. And enough space was given, she decided to take it herself. Leads Gave all it. scorers with 11. More Miller to the rack, and she gets fouled. And we'll go to the line to try and extend the Huskies' lead. Well, you know what? The Huskies were trying to stop oh. Frecking inside. Kept it inside. Thought, okay, she's got the ball outside. Let's step back. And she nailed it. Good drive to the lane. Left hand used there by Miller. Part of that core four combination for the Huskies, averaging double digits. Foul goes against Drew Peterson, her first. First free throw and first point of the evening goes for Miller. Shilpnet comes back on the floor in locking in spot for the Tornadoes. Miller's second shot, too strong off the back iron. Frecking goes up high to get that one and will bring the ball up the floor defended by Engelby right off the gun. Curious to see what kind of a combination maybe defensive stoppage are going to look down low. Here's a pinga. Skip pass finds a pinga. She's defended by Fields. Bounce for Shoknek. Was down almost all the way in but it bounces out. Fields with the rebound. She brings it up. Handoff for Miller. Gets through traffic. Too strong. Her own rebound. This time she lays it up and gets the roll. And Morgan Miller. She gets the two for one. Two shots, one rebound, and connects on that second beautiful touch. Three point attempt by Peterson's off the mark. Voller with pace, gets through traffic, knocks, gets the ball knocked out of her hands. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be a turnover for the Huskies. Well, there you chance to uh, see Voller handling the ball a little bit more. They kind of substitute early, kind of let everyone get through that uh, 
That first look, that first piece. You can see the teams now, Pete, starting to get into the cadence. First look we've seen of Sophia Purcell, senior guard, fracking down low, defended by Engelby. Got her own rebound and then a foul, and Frecking will go to the line for her first free throw attempts tonight. Foul Excellent. goes against Morgan Miller. Does. Excellent uh, high-low pass from Ianni down low to Frecking. Almost had the end one opportunity, but she'll get two from the charity strat. Already 11 for Frecking here in the first half. And just like that, Voller's already back in. Engleby goes out. And Frecking will look, try to make it one for two from the stripe and make it a one possession game. Engleby picked up throw. her second foul. Second one is good, and Frecking has 12. Purcell is in the game and brings it up for her for Andover. Bounce fast, finds Miller at the top of the key. She'll go all the way through the lane, lays it up and in, and off the mark, off the front iron, and Ianni with the rebound at Pinga. Brings the ball up for the Tornadoes, dishes out near side for Shopnik, and this is Laurel Kuyan working to the right hand, gives for Ianni, jumper, good, pure jumper from Ianni from about 16 feet. She shredded the net on that uh, side board, looked at a jumper, huge. One point game, Fields works with the left, down low for Miller, outside finds Voller wide open. Bingo, three pointer for Anna Voller. And that's the last thing the Tornadoes want to see is her getting hot. Voller has her season high this year against Anoka, 32 points. Gets her first three. Kuyan, little pull up in the lane, gets her own rebound, gives for a pinga off the wing, and she answers. Three pinga again, two for two from behind the line. Purcell with the ball in her hands at top. She'll give for Fields at the wing. She gets a lane and dishes back, but too tall for pretty much anybody on the floor, and it's out of bounds, another turnover for the Huskies. By my count, it's three apiece. Correct, it looked like that one just slipped out of the hand. That time of Fields, I get a look here. 23-22 has been a great start to what we anticipated to be a great game. Locking in back on the floor, Frecking gonna take a rest. Papinga works to the left hand, dishes off for Shoknek, who comes to the top, now back for Apinga. Apinga working to get open, Fields, now Voller on her. She picked up her dribble and a turnover, Sophia Purcell has it. Sophia works across the midline, gives for Emma Frost. Frost works to the right hand, gets to the basket, Gets her own rebound, still no, and tipped out. And it's gonna go to Anoka. Great drive by Frost, even a better defensive play because they went straight up and didn't reach out and over the top. That prevented a foul from being called, but enough to obstruct that view coming in from Frost. Heppel back in the game, and now she's on the defensive duties on a pinga. Field slides over to defend Kuyan. Ayani right at the elbow. Collision of two Anoka players near the logo. A Pinga lets one go. No good. And a reach over. Foul over the back is going to be the call against Lackanen. Hey, Lackanen, she can get the ball. She's averaging double figures in uh, rebounds. 11 this season and 11 points a game. A little too overzealous on that effort that time by Lackanen and picks up her first foul. Heppel hustles across the timeline and is met by Kuyan, quickly given off for Fields, back for Heppel in the corner. Miller down low, finds Baller wide open in the corner. Another three for Anna Baller. But you knew that was coming. Good ball rotation and the pass right in the shooting pocket for Baller. She buries it. Kuyan strong off the glass, gets her own rebound, then goes up again. Miller gets the rebound this time. That last time down, Miller with another an assist on a three-pointer. Miller this time goes herself, and she takes it to the cup. I like, she has been closing it up inside as Miller. Some good left-handed drives to the glass. Apinga really looking, looking for that high screen from Miami. This time she's gonna go all the way around. Frost looked like she had a chance to grab that one. 
Now it's back into Pinga's hands up top. She pulls up, and that one's going to be waved off by Annie. Driving yeah, Morgan Miller all the way into the paint with that screen. Yeah. That it was, so we'll get a chance. Freckings got to get back into this game before it gets too far down here for Anoka. And right on cue, here comes Frecking back in. She leads this Anoka team. Does Frecking with uh, 12 points. And that foul on Ianni is her second in just a handful of minutes here in this first half. Something to keep an eye on. Frost gets to the free throw line and picks up her dribble, gives for Fields. Backs it out, does Ellie Fields. She picks up her dribble. Hand off for Voller. Fields works to the elbow and picks it up again right at the paint. Shot fake for Heppel. Frost is going to go to the cut. And draws the foul. I think the crowd behind us might have exploded if that one dropped in. <laughs> Tough one. You can see Anoka defensively dropping an extra player always in that paint. Trying to challenge. And this time they did, and they rotated it back and then taking the cut instead of the three attempt that time, Frost, and she hits the first. Huskies in that focus on, hey, you know what? Ball rotation, but for Anoka defensively. They want to get the Huskies to step off that spot. They want a hand in the face of those three-pointers as Frost collects both of her free throws. Eight-point lead now for the Huskies as Frost makes both. Shopnik blocked. Frost comes down to get that one. Miller is going to start it the other way for the Huskies. Voller gets into the lane, gives her field. She's going to let a three go. Hits off the glass, and that's locking in with the rebound. See what they do here to get that ball into the hands of Frecking. She's been in for the last two possessions, has not touched the ball. She works, she gets the ball here, defended by Emma Frost. Shot doesn't go, good defense by Emma. Good Miller job. finds Voller in the corner. She's gonna let that one fly and no good. Another rebound and a quick touch foul there by Ellie Fields. It'll be the just a third foul on the Huskies here with 523 in this first half. Well, they got that ball right at the elbow for Frecking, that last trip down. And you can see Frecking there has just come out with a roar, 20, 12 points already. But the defense that time had her alter her shot that went off the glass and didn't hit anything else. Pinga works to the right, goes high for Frecking. And Fields tries to meet that pass. Frecking draws the foul, but she hits the ground hard. Fields trying to get to the backside here and disrupt it. Did a little bit more than disrupt, but you know. Second foul on Fields. She'll take a seat. Purcell back in for the Huskies. Four team fouls now on Andover. Pop out. Nope, she's going to run baseline for Frecking, and she banks that one in. Nice job. She drew the fake on that uh, three attempt, took it to the baseline, and then the bank. Frost on the wing, works with the left hand, now back to the right hand, nearly lost it. Regains in the corner for Voller. Voller, little runner, and with the right hand, gets that one to fall. I love that runner. That's from outside the lane, and she just flicks it, and that thing just shredded the net. Locking in, tries to go through the lane, not strong enough, off that front iron. And Morgan Miller gonna start it up, gives it for Frost. Frost. Backs it out, gives for Purcell, slows it into one of Andover's sets. Coach Nichols yelling from the bench. Morgan Schiller, Morgan's shot was short off the iron and rebound goes to the Tornadoes. Frecking holding the ball, gets Voller to go in the air. Oh! And then a rejection by Emma Frost. That was cold, down cold on that block that time by Frost. Baller lost the handle, but Purcell there to scoop up that loose ball. And we've got a foul call coming against the Tornadoes. I believe this is going against Shoknek. It is. Her first. It's a six-team foul, however, for the Tornadoes. Engelby comes in. Frost will take another breather. 3.58 to play, Pete, in this first half. And you see Engelby coming in. And Everyone kind of getting their run in and out and now get themselves uh, fully 
set into this uh, tempo of this game. Next foul by the Tornadoes will send the Huskies to the line. Purcell from the wing loses it, and it's a kickball from by the Tornadoes. The Huskies will restart the shot clock at 20. And some good play out in the perimeter to prevent that uh, inward pass to try to feed it inside there where the Huskies are to play defensively by Anoka. Anoka, by the way, averaging 67 points a game offensively. Heppel thought about it, now gets for Voller, who's gonna let it go, this one doesn't go. Heppel races in to get that rebound, now it's out to Miller, who's gonna work through traffic, no good. Rainer gets her own rebound, goes to the right hand, and it drops. Another two for one that time for Miller. Took the initial shot, got the old board, and cashed that to the bank for two more. Huskies lead is up to 10, Shokneck to Peterson, now to lock it in at the perimeter, she's gonna go inside, tries to look for a pass, and a travel is freaking second guessed on that first and second move. And another turnover against the Tornadoes. Well, you see, the Huskies turned it up a notch defensively. It doesn't mean you have to block a shot, but just square up and get in front of uh, a person defensively. And that time it forced the turnover. Engleby is going to let one fly, and it's good. Hand up from Miller. And Engleby jumps into the three party, and the Huskies are up by 13. Timeout goes to the Tornadoes. Engleby with eight. It's also Voller. She's at 10. Coming back to Miller, seven. And then the play of Frost early on in this game. She set the tone, hitting two early threes, and a beautiful defensive play on the other end, Pete. Yeah, very good, very good defense on the Huskies end limiting and changing the, the shot arcs of locking in and Frecking as Frecking started out this game very hot, had uh, 11 points before we even got to the 14 minute mark. Take a look at the uh, sections and how things were arrived and here tonight as you get a look at Andover with a bye initially, then they took on Blaine, a tough battle. Pete, you saw that game, I was not able to hit it. Blaine played them well, Anoka meanwhile on the other side too had some great plays and a, an outstanding play and a win against Centennial to shut down uh, Munson, Metz, and also McCall. And in that game, uh, right about this time of that game, Centennial was up 10, and it was a big run to close out the half that Anoka used for the momentum and then won the second half outright. Locking it. Gives for Shokneck, who's going to dribble to the left side, left wing, handoff for Apinga. She uses a head fake, gets into the lane, and draws the foul down low. Such we'll an see active here, guard. Heppel on skates and then draws the foul on the body of Sophia Purcell. Apinga will be playing basketball next year at Bemidji State. Meanwhile, locking in at Winona State. First misses off the front iron. She takes a short jaunt outside of the perimeter, outside of the arc, comes back, resets. Anoka loves to get this thing down to single digits here before the half, if not even a little closer. Can a bingo, that second. One for two from the line. Heppel brings it up. Frecking steps out to double with Peterson. Ball gets down low to Miller. Miller finds the open shooter. It's Voller. She nails it. Her, Her third. third of the evening, and the Huskies leads up to 15. Watch that ball movement, and then the pass isn't low, it isn't high, it's right in that shooting pocket. She knew, hey, that was going to be an advantage to get it to Voller, Voller, cash. Handoff for a pinga. She's defended well down low by Miller. It's rejected and out of bounds. It'll be the Tornado's ball once again with 20 on the shot clock. Into the game now for the Huskies' as fields. You know, we've had an opportunity both to, to talk to both coaches, and if you ask Coach Nichols who the best passer is on this team, he will, without hesitation, say it's Morgan Miller. Off the inbound, Frecking got around, used the double screen, and a quick, easy basket for the Tornadoes off the free off the inbound play. Freak, uh, Frecking now with 16 for Anoka. Everybody else with just 11. Fields up top for the Huskies, gives off for Purcell. She's defended. By Shokneck, that pass broken up by Peterson out of bounds, intended for Heppel. 
And she feels they'll throw it on here on the near side right in front of us. You bet Anoka wanted to get out and challenge those three-point shooters. Purcell comes to the wing, takes it, gets it in low for Miller. She's going to be defended by Lockin and gets around and Lockin and saying, I stood straight up. How's, uh, how's that a foul? But it is. One and one time and now. One and one for, the, for Morgan Miller. 146 remaining here in the half. Frost comes lead back is at in. 13. Oh, Frost. Sorry about that. Yeah, go ahead. Now Frost back in, but you got to remember the start that Frost had, hitting those first couple of threes, kind of getting their legs underneath, and the cadence and the frenzy in the pregame, and just before that game, boy, she, that's the poise you were looking for. And to me, you see a Frost, and Frost brings that every game consistently, that same approach, and, and some nice defensive stoppage as well. Eight points for Frost. Miller with nine. No. In and out on the second one, one for two on that trip to the line for Miller. Locking and brings it up. She is going to go right inside, tries to barrel through Morgan Miller and too strong off the glass. The Huskies coming the other way. Voller gives it up for Miller. Miller lays it up and in. Nice pass, nice recognition there by Voller finding Miller with single coverage. Good quick passes, a catch and release once it got inside from Voller in the pass then to Miller. Heppel with the steal. She's still pressured by Kuyan. Now more than Miller has it up top. Vill Voller goes inside for Purcell. She'll back it out. Voller closely guarded by a pinga. And she gets around traffic too strong off the short side. And at one, Morgan Miller. 12 here in the first half, and she has taken over inside. Trying to box, but that height advantage. But meanwhile, also a good drive initially by Voller. Yeah, best penetration that the Huskies have had here this evening. And Miller has it high off the back iron and bounce out as she can't convert the three-point play. Opinga now under a minute to play. Shot clock still on. Shopnik back out for Opinga. Opinga defended by Heppel. Double screen set. It bounces back out. Here's an opportunity. Voller all alone goes up, tries to draw the contact, and drains it. That's how you teach it back in fifth grade. Drive the lane, absorb the contact, and finish the shot. Anna Voller did just that. Usually Voller very strong at closing, and that time she did not disappoint. 15 on the night already, so she and Miller in double figures at 15 and 12 for the Huskies. A chance for her 16th, and there it's in the books. Forty-eight, twenty-seven. now, shot clock off. Tornado's looking to try and close this gap, heading into the locker room. Kuyan in the lane, shot adjusted because of Voller's defense, and it's off the mark. Heppel back to Mor Miller down low, off the glass, it's good! Good pass by Heppel. Got it through a small window. Good hands by Miller, she converts it to the bank for two. Apinga, under three. Works to the right, lays up a runner, no good. The Huskies finish the half on a 27 to five run to open up a 23 point lead going into the locker room. The Huskies just scored 55 points in the entire game against Blaine in the semifinal. Here tonight, they've got 50 and a half. The longer they play, the stronger they're getting here in this game. But I'm guessing Anoka has a strong second half directed and ready to come at us. We're going to come back at, at, with second half, but before that, we've got interviews that both Joe and I recorded before the game with both of the head coaches. We'll take a listen and look at those right now.
head coach for Anelka, Nick Novak, in his fifth season. 17-11 for your squad. You've seen some progression over the last couple of years, and, and now you're playing for a trip to the state tournament. Yep. Yes, we're very excited to be here. I really saw a lot of growth throughout the season with these girls. Defensively, we're playing extremely well right now, and on offense, we're really gelling because we're just trusting each other. I'll tell you, you see a lot of uh, commonalities with these two teams, Andover and Anoka. Both have really developed that talent, had you know, starters from some from freshmen, such as yours as well, sophomore year, and, and boy, to see it culminate to this game tonight really is a, a good sponsorship of this programs. Yep, I agree. We have we know these girls very well, and they know us very well. They've been playing each other their entire basketball careers. Very similar offensively. We can both shoot the three. We can both get downhill. We both play defense. It's going to be a really fun one tonight. How would you go on to describe your team in terms of a couple words and breakdown that really differentiate them from others? Um, the energy and trust that we have within our program is huge. Uh, defense, every single girl from top to bottom. Um, our varsity team all the way down to our freshman squad buys into defense. We know that defense is going to get us there. If we can stop teams from scoring, we know that we can score and win these games. Tipping points, uh, what do you think defensively that you'll like to do and execute that has been getting, having you success here in postseason? For tonight, we need to make sure we contest the shots. Andover can get hot and score 12 points before you can blink of an eye. So to make sure that we can test their shots and rebound, and ultimately we need to set up all trouble. Nick Novak, head coach for Anoka, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm here with Andover head basketball coach Blake Nichols. Blake, you've had a great season, a great run. You're right here where you expected to be when you guys started the season back in November. What's the key to taking the next step and, and earning that state tournament berth? I think for us it's sustaining the way that we play. We've had a great season. Uh, we've really developed on the defensive end. We've uh, let it fuel our offense, and if we can do that tonight and continue to be the best version of ourselves, I think we're going to be successful, but it's going to take a lot. Um, Anoka's been having a great season. They had a great win over Centennial, and we're going to have to bring our best version of ourselves tonight to be successful. Talking about your opponent in, in Anoka, and it's a team that you guys have, have beat by double digits twice this year. What have you learned from them, and what, have you, what do you expect they've learned about you that's going to change the dynamic here tonight? Well, Nick's such a good coach, and he's going to be ready. I mean, when you have two games under your belt playing against us, um, he knows that we play fast and that we're very dynamic and athletic, and we know that they're one of the best rebounding teams in the state. They have one of the most dynamic guards in Evia Pinga, Maddie Frecking, Lydia Lankinen. They're explosive. It's going to be a, an outstanding basketball game with great players on both sides. The, the senior group of, of the six girls on your team, the, the, the group that he's got on the other side, these girls have, have battled you know, since they, they've started playing basketball. What is the, the, the dynamic between all of these players as they know that they're competing for that same spot in this tournament? You know, I think that gives a lot of emotion, but I think the maturity of being seniors on both ends understand that that's what's the joy of competing, right? the joy of the journey, all those years of basketball, their senior season of basketball comes down to this, and there's no better feeling than laying it, all, laying it all out on the line with a bunch of your teammates and your coaches, and that's what's special about high school sports. because we just had our girls volleyball team go to state and so they kind of brought like the winning mentality to our team or like our school which makes it really fun. I'm most excited for the season to build relationships with my teammates and my coaches and and get like 10 points and then we pass the ball to a different sophomore and they go and get 10 points. It's just fun how we've been playing together recently. Some pre things that we do as a team are five minute meditations at a time just before we come out on the court just to gather ourselves and envision what we're going to do during the game. Right, team is really highly motivated themselves. Um, setting a goal, knowing that every single night we go in, we could win, we could lose, 
So really setting that tone the first five minutes of every game is a good goal for our team to start off. I really like the team aspect, but like... We keep it really light sometimes, but I feel like we can lock in sometimes when we have to. So before games, we like to like hold our hands like. Customers was Joanna, who posted on social media to bring Laureen's kindness to the community. Hearing that Laureen didn't have a working car, which she relies on to get to work and important doctor appointments for her husband. Fellow Andover residents shared their nice interactions with her as well, and started a GoFundMe page to help Laureen fix her car. This is for you. You oh can open it now gosh. if you want to, or maybe save it for later. I'd say maybe open it now if you want yes, to. Yes, I'm going to. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you so yes. much. Yes, oh, of course. Did you Thank you so much. <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything like this ever. And it's the, the Andover community came together and my customers and really surprised me and I am very, very grateful for it. She really outgo reaches out to everybody. She makes everyone feel welcome. She loves her job. Yeah, it beams off of her. So you walk in there, you know that she's where she wants to be and she does a fabulous job and she makes everyone feel welcome and, you know, tries to put a smile on every single person's face. Little kids, big kids, anybody, so. I, I don't plan on going anywhere. I've been asked by a few people and offered more money to go elsewhere. Welcome back inside the North Branch Fieldhouse. Alongside Joe Rulin, I'm Pete Anderson on QCTV Sports. Thanks for joining us here tonight, everybody. This is a Section 7 4A championship. And in the first half, Joe, it was started out really tight back and forth. Maddie Frecking was the was the answer for the Tornadoes, but then later in that half, it uh, ended up being all Huskies. Yeah, and you know what? That first half was all Frecking for the most part. She and Apinga able to combine for a total of uh, 23 points between the two of them, but the Huskies rotated that ball around, got a lot of players involved, including a total of eight three-points three-pointers made in that first half. You see Voller there, she had 16, Miller 14, and then you got Ingleby and Frost with eight each. And of course, who can forget that side, that corner, three-point bank shot by uh, by uh, uh, a chance there for Heppel. Heppel. Yeah, you, you, the, the, the Husky <laughs> starting lineup really, uh, you know, found their groove late. On the Anoka side, 
It's been Frecking, Epinga, and then four points for Miami, and that is it. They have three people who put the ball in the bucket. Steal right off the gate. Another turnover for the Tornadoes. Voller goes through the lane. It's on the floor. The it's going to be a jump. It's going to go to the Huskies. Really good defense down low there by Shoknek to, to make sure that Voller didn't have an easy two. Right. I, I was just going to say the same thing. Well played and tied up Voller. Heppel to inbound. Goes up top for Miller. Miller's going to give for Frost. She has eight in the first. She's clamped by Shoknek. Gives off for Heppel into the corner. Now it's Apinga defended by Kuyan. Frost from the wing gets into the paint, goes off. Goes up and threw that one up, didn't hit anything. And finally it's Engelby getting the pass down low and laying it up and in. Engelby now in double digits with 10, but Frost did a lot of the work on that possession. Shopnek gives off for Lackanen right at the top of the key. Frecking works the right hand, goes into Miller. Too strong off the glass, out of bounds. It'll go stay with Anoka, 17 on the shot clock. Yep, Frost, Frost got a hand on it just as it uh, tried to gather it and knocked it out of play. By my count, it was five turnovers for the Tornadoes in the first half, three for the tor for the Huskies. Apinga gives it for Lackanen. Lackanen defended by Miller, face guarded. She tries to shoot over her and can't get it to go. Voller with the rebound. She brings it up. Apinga runs into a hard screen by Miller. Now a skip pass for Heppel. Thought about pulling the trigger, gets in, and then she does. Blocked by Kuyan. Good defense there by Laurel. Excellent hands that time to deflect that shot. And the pass going to go over and back. And that'll be another turnover for the Tornadoes. The Huskies defense forcing some uncharacteristic errors by the Tornadoes players. Well, Anoka's got that sense of urgency. Each possession has to count when you're at the deficit that they have right now. And so when you have that urgency and that additional pressure, that sometimes can be a result of the turnovers. Frost gets her path stopped by Kuyan and then a help ball possession, but it'll go as a turnover for the Huskies. That time as Anoka reciprocates on the defensive play and get the ball back without surrendering additional points. It comes down to possessions here when it's uh, 16 minutes left to go here in the second half. And the Huskies with a demanding lead right now. Tornado's looking to unlock something. Frecking uses Bam. the screen and hits a three. And she's now up to a game high, 19. And that will get you back into the game quick. Is that three-point shot? And the total, as you mentioned, 19. Frecking squares up, gets a look, cannot deny. And wow, shredded the net on that three. Just a nice handoff there by Lacken and then held her spot. Anoka shows press, Andover easily breaks. Frost gets into the lane, hard off the glass. Miller there for the rebound, and the putback is good. Miller up to a ties now, Voller for a team high 16. Oh, she cleans up again in the right spot. A good drive by Frost initially. Turn around down to the baseline for Lackanen. Feeds a streaking Epinga. Her right hand layup, no good. Frost with the rebound, brings it up, tries to get past Kuyan, does, puts the brakes on. Now just is near side for Engelby. Engelby goes up after feeling the contact, tries to scoop that one, but gets the call instead and will head to the line. Well, the Huskies right now in the midst of a six-game winning streak. Their season has kind of been a streak. In fact, they had an earlier one of 12 wins in a row. Uh, they started the season with two wins, a win over Forest Lake and Anoka, then dropped two to Eden Prairie and Eastview. That's their only back-to-back -back losses of the season for Andover. Another loss later on to Maple Grove, but since uh, their loss to Maple Grove on February 7th, they put together a six-game winning streak now as we head into this section championship. Engelme misses them both. Frecking brings it up. Baller backs off to the perimeter, hand up. Wants to at least defend that three-point shot. Voller goes to the floor. Frecking takes advantage and lays it in. Taking an official timeout to check in on Voller. Good, strong drive that time by Frecking. Blackjack now, 21 on the game for Frecking. 
Voller checked out. She's okay. She's got the ball in her right hand. She works around a Pinga. Dishes off for Engelby. Engelby works in with the left. Trying to get through Frecking. Good footwork. And a hook shot goes in for Piper Engelby. Nice job contorting her body and getting some distance between herself and Frecking to get that shot off. Frecking working downhill it. through the lane, up and in. That's called a slice and a dice in a left-hand bank. 23 now for Frecking. Engelby gives off for Miller. Working around the perimeter are the Huskies. Now Frost backs it out to Heppel. Heppel's gonna go all the way off the glass. Lacey Heppel with six points here tonight. Solid with the, the turnover ratio. And a great play there by Morgan Miller. Denying that pass and forcing Lockenden out of bounds. That Oops. is a big, big play, a great turnover force there by Morgan Miller. But you know what I like? The hands are straight up. They're not reaching over the top. And she's optimizing that height and that reach by doing that. Heppel, by the way, six tonight. That's her season high. Came in averaging three a game. Spin move by Miller. She gets denied. Frecking and Ianni teaming up to alter her shot. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Huskies. 23 seconds left on the shot clock. Off the inbound, let's see if they try to get it right back down to Miller. Engelby thought about it from about three feet beyond the arc. Instead, she's going to give for Heppel. Oh, two. Two. <laughs> three. And she's got a new career high with nine. And two trifectas already this evening. Shot too strong for Apiga. Heppel with the rebound. Apiga keeping her eyes up, deflects that pass and creates a turnover. Tornado's coming the other way. Frecking getting past Miller, draws the contact, and will go to the line for two. At that time, you saw Miller really reach as she was up top trying to block that. That made that block a lot, fell a lot easier to close. Good, strong move by Frecking. Two excellent athletes right there. Miller on her way to Clemson. Frecking at the line, 23 on the night, make that 24. Frecking right now is uh, still set to go to St. Thomas to play softball there. She is an excellent shortstop, but she's putting up 24. Unbelievable for Frecking tonight, her season high is 33. Rolls that one over the front rim and now has 25. She might eclipse that season high before the 10 minute mark. She has two-thirds of the tornado points. Miller tries to flash down low against Diani. Goes up with the left hand. Pure. Boy, Miller is feeling it. She can feel that defender on the back. A nice little spin cycle move to get that off. Now with 18. Pick Miller. and roll works with a pinga and frecking. And Maddie goes down low. It banks it in. Continues her hot night. Good, strong, both of these post players able to close so well. Fields and Purcell now on the floor for the Huskies here in this second half. Field Purcell goes right back to Miller. Miller with some great footwork and lays it up and in with the left hand. Excellent footwork, a little dancing with the Stars exhibition there. and Closes it up with two more, now 20 on the game. The lead now is at 27. Foul is going to be called on Ellie Fields. That's her third. Look at this. See Good this inbound replay. play right there. Even faked out the camera. The camera went for the fake up top, and she still had the ball. Great job. But it's all about that footwork. Four horns down here for Anoka on the inbound. Gives for Frecking on the baseline now it works from Peterson Diani back to Frecking and a great piece of defense there by Fields really? defending the much taller Frecking getting a hand on a ball and it's out of bounds it'll stay with the Tornadoes Frost will come in there to replace Fields with those three fouls but it'll be another inbound and now they're going to go four corners looking inside they got a basket on that play earlier in the game this time Frecking strong off the glass. 
Well, she gets, gets her, her own two for one and one, right? So she got two opportunities, finally converts, and then the end one opportunity here for Freck, and she's pushing 30 points if she makes this uh, free throw. Officials having a discussion. I'm sure it's about Pete Anderson and his hair, but we are going to get a read here. And they're not sure what the uh, conversation was about. I doubt it was my hair. It does look <laughs> great tonight, but <laughs> thanks for that. In and out on the free throw. And the Huskies still up 25. Ross thought about that three, now puts it on the floor, gets into the paint, lays it up. Had it altered and doesn't get anything called. She's back on defense. Apinga using the speed, looks for that over the shoulder pass. It's a turnover. Purcell makes it come the other way. Voller shot off the front iron. Apinga thought about pushing the pace. Now we'll slow it down. Maybe great up at, top. Yep, being good at closing up and getting the hand in the face of Apinga on those three point attempts as well. Ayani set a screen. Now it's Frecking giving off for Lackanen. Lackanen defended by Engelby. Works. Gets that shot off the back glass. Banks it in. Lackanen's first points here tonight. Now she did strong move and she closed it. Purcell mirrored by Drew Peterson. Miller calling for that ball in the low post. Now they want to. They've been trying to get it in a couple of different avenues. That time Miller was trying to conduct traffic on the post to try to get it to Baller, and then Baller with a bounce pass into her, but uh, that pass went a little too wide and a turnover for Andover. So the last two baskets have been made by the Tornadoes, one by Frecking, one by Shook, or excuse me, Lackanen. It's the first time the Tornadoes have scored back-to-back -back baskets without a Husky shot or point in there. Here tonight, locking it on the elbow, works down low on Voller, now faces her up, gives her Peterson on the wing. She'll launch a three, and it's good. And Peterson drew the hot hand from trifecta land and the win over Centennial. See, she can hot heat it up here late. Miller will launch a three, and she answers. Of course she did. She's hitting everything. Miller answers a 7-0 run by the Tornadoes with a three of her own. Extends a lead back to 23. That one goes out of bounds. It's another turnover for the Huskies. They're up to four this half. 23 points for the now tornadoes, for Miller. Excuse me. Yeah, after that three, she shows her range and diverse level. She scores from all levels, does Miller. Purcell dishes off to Heppel. Picks up her dribble, now tries to give for Voller, and that was red. Peterson comes in with the steal. Apinga is blocked. But the foul is called on Heppel. The good news for Lacey is that's her first. As Apinga, she read that back door perfectly that time as they made the cut to the lane and the pass by Heppel, but Heppel didn't give up. She got back to disrupt that layup. And now at the line, Apinga. 10-21 on the clock. Apinga's first is good. Two for three from the line tonight is Apinga. Her first point of the second half, I believe. That's correct. Uh, the, the, the first 12 points of the half were scored by Frecking, which just continued the trend of the first half. She hit the second, did Apinga. But the last seven have been scored by players not named Maddie Frecking. Miller gives for Heppel, back for Miller, down low against Diani. That left hand's too strong off the mark. Apinga's gonna push the pace the other way, get past Heppel, and draws another foul on Lacey, and he'll go to the line trying to add two more. You know, I'm just gonna say that she's so fast, she would never be touched if it came to the running of the Bulls. Uh, for a bingo, as fast as she is, gosh, she's lightning. That comes right out of the can, I'm telling you, she's got some speed. And of course, three-point has been her forte as well throughout her career. She has 102 three-pointers three pointers made in her career. Lacking in back in for the tornado, she steps into the paint. And a look to 
Potentially get an offensive rebound here. It doesn't matter as that one is good. It's another two for two session for a pinga at the line. And it brings the tornado score up to 49. They trail by 19. Miller outside for Voller. Good head fake, gets in with the runner and gets the roll and gets it to fall to Zanna Voller. Her first points here in the second half. Puts the Huskies back up by a 20 plus part point margin. Locking in down low against Miller. And she's able to get that look and finds it. Banks at home. Hey, locking in that time, really got position great down low. A couple of moves to the right and took the other one to the bank. Frost down low, she's gonna go baseline, works up off the glass. It's a beauty of a play, Emma Frost walking that baseline and creating, slicing as Joe Rulin would say, to the basket. Walking and trying to use her length and get a pass to Frecking, it ends up in a turnover. Voller's gonna go the length of the court and she's blocked. Straight up, the official says, was locking in, and she's going to come the other way. All the way down in on Heppel. Too strong off the back iron. Balancing ball comes back out. Shoknet gives for Peterson. She rattles it home. Her second trifecta here in the second half, and they needed to heat up in a hurry. Just two players for Anoka in double figures. Afinga and Frecking. Frecking, of course, with 29. Voller with the left hand. She gets the call. She'll go to the line and trying to prove upon her 18 points here tonight as the Huskies still nursing that 18 point lead 826 remain on the clock and they'll do here's a look and a drive a little little verse from Johnny Cash he walks the line does frost and takes it to the glass that puts her at double figures beautiful strong drive that's a double figures and here's a little need to know by Joe for you. Now that the core four have been double figures, this is their 11th time this season that they have been in double figures, the core four. They are 11 and 0 when they reach that parameter and, and that uh, accomplishment. So a very strong performance again tonight already for Andover with 8.26 to go here in this second half. And they're up top with a healthy lead right now. Timeout by Elka. You mentioned, Joe, that uh, the Huskies had a, a, a very impressive record when the, that four all get to double figures and, and all of them there now. It's, uh, it, you know, it's been a fun run watching these girls as, uh, you know, some of them played, have played varsity basketball since they're freshmen. And you, you kind of feel it or being around them a little bit and seeing them and, and seeing their energy. They have, a, they have a knowledge that this is their time. This is their turn to go and, and see what they can do on the big stage. It has, the last visit for the Andover Huskies and the last trip to the state tournament was way back in 2014, 15. And uh, it's been a while. I know D'Agostino was a member on that team, of course. Um, you know, such a variety you also have on that team was also uh, Jolie Danninger. She had 16 in the game and they went and played Eastview in the quarterfinals in that game. but. Uh, took the loss, but that's the last time. 2014-15 was the last appearance in the state tournament for girls high school basketball and over version. Voller makes both the free throws, makes the lead 20 points again. Apinga works to the right, gives it for Peterson. She's gonna shoot from way downtown! Just off the mark, off that front iron. Morgan Miller with the rebound. She's gonna push the pace. Now puts the brakes on, gives for Heppel, walks the baseline. We're going to call a charge that time on Heppel. So far, Heppel. He, he's, he's calling it on that front arm. Heppel using it to create space against Peterson. That's the third foul on Heppel. Something to keep an eye on with 8.08 to go. Heppel, such an excellent role player. And tonight, she's really done a great job of demonstrating that skill set. Skip pass near side, finds Peterson a fadeaway, too strong. Your ball goes right into the bread basket of Anna Voller. Voller will work it up. She's met by locking in just inside the three-point arc. She gives for Engelby. Engelby works down to Miller. Miller finds the open shooter. It's Lacey Heppel. That one's off the mark. Apinga with the rebound. 
Apingo wanting to find Peterson in that corner once again. And that was skip past far side, finds Lockett and works into the lane, gives it back to Peterson at that spot. She hits this time. Third three in the second half for Peterson as Heppel's doing such a great job of tying up Apinga and not allowing her to get a look at a three. Peterson's been able to answer. Engelby looks to answer, goes for a big one, high off the iron, big rebound comes down and it's a held ball and it'll be the Huskies hanging on to possession. It's a critical part of the game right here. It's seven minutes left. And Anoka starting to make that move and cut into this deficit with the help of those trifectas by Peterson. Heppel inbounds to Frost at the top, who's defended by Iani. She throws up a prayer as she was falling off balance to her left. It's no good. Frecking gaps the rebound, brings it up. Iani now on the wing, defended by Miller. Frecking goes down low, finding Lockenin, who got behind Engelby. And the lead is now 15 for the Huskies. Another high-low conversion down to the post, this time Frecking to Iani. A little motion offense for the Huskies. Gives back to Heppel in the corner, goes down low, finds Miller. Nope, it's going to be up top. Frost works through the lane off the rim and down. It's locking in with the rebound. Locking in, buries her head and gets Frost to the, the basket, foul. draws the foul against Emma Frost. Boy, they're making a the move right now. They're finding kind of a little stall up top to key on their oh. last couple of drives, kind of assess it and then. Side eight, kick it down low to Frecky, or take that lane. The foul on Frost is her first. Locking and drains the first. And the lead is down to 14. It grew as large as 25. I love the adjustments. Coach Nick Novak has made and getting that member's role. Lockett and then now back to within 13. Here's Anoka. Engleby trying to use the screen of Miller. Now it goes in. And another offensive foul. Engleby pointing to the floor. I think she thought Apinga was inside the arc. She was not. She was also not square. That was an explosive collision down low. And the Tornado's making that shift. Engleby goes to the bench on the floor for the Huskies. It's Heppel, Fields, Voller, Miller, and Frost. Apinga brings the ball up, stops on the logo, gives it for Frecking, and Fields right away, right in her grill, makes her pick up the dribble. She gets by, she's trying to squeeze it past field, she does. And here's the run that Andover was expecting. The lead is down to 11. We stayed that game, going down the post, and of course, Frecking now with 31. Apple at the top, finds Frost on the near side. Frost defended by Ieni. Apple gonna put it on the floor, gives it Gives it up for Voller. The pass was tipped out of bounds. Good hands by a Pinga there. 13 on the shot clock for the Huskies. 5.24 to go as that lead barely in double digits. Miller finds the open shooter. It's Frost. She works to the basket. She draws the foul from Frecking. It'll be the third on Maddie. And Emma will look to bump the Huskies' lead back up to 13. Frost walks the line again, heads to the baseline. As you see head coach Blake Nichols having a conversation. There with guard fields. A much needed hoop. They needed to move the number that time. Did the Huskies this time down, and they do. Cross makes them both. That ends a 9-0 run for the Tornadoes. Apinga dishes for Peterson in the corner again. 
Hits the front side of that rim, and Miller, Miller brings it all the way down. Dishes for Frost. The rebound bounces out to Miller. Frost swings that ball around, getting Peterson's arms out of her bubble, and gives back to Heppel as there's under 10 on the shot clock. Heppel with the left hand, puts the brakes on, gives it back for Miller. Miller working down low, off the glass, too strong. Locking in with the rebound. 13-point deficit the Tornadoes face as we approach four and a half to go. Locking in, back up top for Ianni. Ianni puts it on the floor. Miller gives her space, works it all the way around. Frecking now working into the paint with her right hand. Scoop shot up and in. What touch. Time timeout her. for the Tornadoes. It'll be a 30-second timeout. But that lead back down to 11. You can tell Frecking, Frecking when she received that ball, she was bound and determined to roll that off her fingertips. And uh, boy, what touch. And she now has matched her career high. Frecking with 33 here tonight. And so intense has been the last eight minutes of this game. And Anoka has closed it back up to 11 points here with 423 to play. And those, uh, those 11 points, that deficit, it also bears noting that the Huskies are in the are in the bonus, so anytime they foul, Anoka's at least going to the line for a one and one. The remainder of the way, they'll be shooting free throws anytime the Huskies commit a non-offensive foul. Huskies fans getting to their feet, coming out of this timeout. Trying to recapture a little of that momentum that the Huskies brought at the end of the first half where they extended that lead out to 23. Heppel inbounds, gets it back from Voller, gets it across the timeline, immediately works downhill. Fields now up top. Back for Frost. Emma works to the right hand. She's met by Lockinen and Frecking. Both chime in. Now Voller thought about it. Now he's going to go up. Gets inside, draws the foul on locking in, and she'll go to the line. That's the sixth foul on the tornado. So that point I just made about any foul committed now applies to the tornadoes as well. That's correct. And that time, I like that choice by Voller. Didn't settle for the three, and took that euro step and drew the foul. Extended that play and drew the foul there. Head coach Nick Novak not at all happy with that decision 21 points now for Voller make it 22. Voller four for four her last two trips to the line. Kuyan goes inside for Frecking defended by Fields and draws the foul gets the bucket and will go for an old-fashioned three-point play here to make this a 10-point game. The and one opportunity. They're doing a great job of getting that size advantage in set, that setup defensively as Fields, an excellent defender, is getting matched up after some switches and screens. And uh, that time, Frecking recognized it and picked up the 35th and 36th point now tonight for herself, a career high. It's a 10 point game, 345 on the clock. Heppel. Defended by Kuyan. Plenty of space between them. Now it's Voller, and she draws the foul. Kuyan coming in to help. And I believe they're going to get Kuyan for it. It is. Just her second. And it'll be one and one for Anna Voller. Both coaches just kind of rolling the dice. Section championships as it gets closer. I haven't seen a lot of timeouts yet here in the second half. Both teams have three timeouts remaining, but I'm sure Anoka will be using theirs quickly here. Voller for the second half. Makes them both. Got 24 on the game, takes over the team high. Pinga gets Miller. down low, now near the baseline, works the baseline. Outside, finds locking in, works into the paint, puts the brakes on, and goes up and over Angleby. And locking in 
adds to her total. She now has 10, and the lead is 10. All in the second half for her. Abinga ran through a pick that Miller had set, and both of them went to the floor. It would be Abinga's third. She was contested. That was still a moving And you screen. see that here. She goes right through her. Head coach Nick Novak has not liked either of the last two foul calls or the explanation he's got for them, showing disgust. Front end, no good. And it works out for the Tornado. Chance for Anoka to get the single digits since first time Ianni late in the first. Buries the head, throws up a prayer, gets the rebound for Frecking. It's on the floor, still working through traffic. Ianni gets a short jumper and drains it. What play to get this thing back to single digits with plenty of time left, 2.59. And boy, they aren't back all the way. But it's taken a lot to get the eight. And we see the player of the game here. It's uh, quite a bit to go here, but Morgan Miller, she's uh, been strong on the glass. She's got 23 points. She's had, did you see that, def that rejection? And her work in the paint here has been the consistent scoring for the Huskies all night long. She has. She's had several two for ones. Got her own offensive rebound or teammates and be able to convert. That's the thing is converting those. But here's another player of the game, Frecking. Oh my. 36 points for Frecking. She has owned it in size. Talk about not missing anything inside. She hasn't done that. And she's also got a couple of trifectas added to her portfolio tonight. I have been impressed with the play of Frecking. But the Tornadoes have. Uh, Diversified their scoring here in the second half. If I can stay on your uh, portfolio, <laughs> your financial puns here. But uh, Frecking still has 50% of the Tornado's points with that 36 of the 72. Good show, great environment here tonight at North Branch High School. And everyone is up and getting at it here. It's both student sections on their feet. Heppel ready to inbound. This and is she as gets close it right as back. Anoka's been till about the midway mark of that first half. The Voller down low, misses it. Missed it down low. Apinga nearly turned it over, kept her dribble alive. Now she turns on the jet. She's going to go all the way, coast to coast. Ianni with the rebound and the putback. Back to within six. Engleby puts it on the floor. She works. Now backs off. Up top, she finds Heppel. Engleby trying to get it into low to Miller. We get a kick ball from Ianni. Oh, you got to love the tenacious play by Anoka here in the second half. Of, oh, they are taking over the play inside. Miller gives for Heppel off the inbound. She comes back up top. And now over now. Hey, contempt up to the logo. some time off the clock. They work the clock all the way down. There'll be two to go. Off the glass, too strong. Locking in with the rebound. It's a two possession game. A three pointer will, or a three point play will put Onoka within one shot. Frecking to the rim. She misses. Miller with the rebound and draws the foul. You know, Frecking is hating that miss because she's made that all night, all career. That time just got a little too close underneath, and the rim actually made the block on that shot. That could have cut it to within four. But instead, back the other way, here comes Miller, and Miller. The foul is for some clutch free throws. The foul is on Ianni. It's her third. The ninth team foul, so the next foul by the Tornadoes will send the Huskies to the line for two. This is just one. More Miller makes the first. Looks pretty comfortable at that free throw line. Good release, good trajectory. Now 24. Misses the second, long rebound. Frecking comes down with it. She's pressured by Miller. Well outside the paint. A switch and a nearly a turnover. Engleby had it and kicks it out of bounds. 
It'll be the Tornado's ball, a minute 44, down seven. Uh, Pingo was calling for the ball in that corner, but Heppel was waiting for the pass from Frecking to be able to jump that, but eventually a good defensive play. Huskies. Ingleby goes up top. Too far. Miller is going to go up, lays it up, too strong. On the rebound, Ella puts it in. 14. Now for Frost, she converts on the offensive board. Apinga through the lane, off the glass, too strong. Miller with another rebound, dribbling through traffic, gives it for Voller. Euro step, and it's an offensive foul. Frecking down on the floor, she's going to be up. That foul on Voller is just her first. Yep, she lowered the shoulder. And Ended up taking out a couple of the Tornado players. Oh my, what a transition. A toss back up top goes over the head of Ianni. 83 seconds remain here in regulation. It's a nine point game. The Tornadoes looking to close this deficit. Winner goes to the state tournament. Kuyan with the ball in her right hand. Defended by Frost, she gets around the screen. Now she's defended by Voller, Ianni. Around to a Pinga. Pinga thought about it. No, Ianni. Under 20 on the shot clock. Frecking down low, working against Frost. And it's taken away. Both three on the floor. Battling for it. Kuyan and Heppel. It's a jump ball that goes to the Huskies. What energy by both teams. Relentless. No one is giving up. Strapping for the ball on the floor. Laying it out. And here's a chance. Now for the Huskies. Perhaps close this opportunity and make what they've been planning to that trip to the state tournament in Oka. Still would like to prevent that from happening. Novak yelling on the floor for his team to press and foul right away. Kuyan draws that foul. It'll put Heppel at the line for two. The foul on Kuyan's her third. He's still fired up about not getting a call on that last possession. Heppel at the line, a chance to hit double figures for the first time all year for her. That would be a, all five starters in double figures for the Huskies. She doesn't. You've been averaging three a game and has hit two three-pointers. Made some key dishes and dimes and now at the free throw line. Purcell Chance. on the floor as well for the Huskies and a defensive move. Heppel misses the second, rebound goes to Miller. Back up top for... And Kuyan with another touch foul on Voller. She'll go to the line for two. Yeah, no rush for the Huskies to shoot anything, so hold that ball. Make the Camacho in that time, they tied it up. Voller at the line, she's now made five. Correction, she's made seven free throws in a row. And calmly sinks them both. Eighty-six, seventy-four. Frecking down low. Too strong with the left hand. Miller with another rebound. She's in double-double now with three points and points. And Voller draws the fourth. I think that'll actually be the fifth foul on Kuyan. And that is. Voller 26, Miller 24. A cadence we've seen this year. Frost with 14. And Engelby also in double digits. That is five. Kuyan done for the night. She leaves scoreless on the night after somebody who's been averaging near double digits eight on the season. First minutes of the game here for Huffman, who steps in for Kuyan. Engelby will step in for Heppel, 33 seconds remain on the clock. And we've got two free throws here for Anna Voller. 
She makes the first. Season high of 32 came against Anoka. Second game of the year, and this free throw makes it 28. And the lead is 14. Lockenin takes the inbound, will bring it up. She's going to go into the paint, kicks it out. Now Opinga defended by Purcell. Pass goes off the body of Engelby in the corner. They need to get a three off quickly. Opinga does fire. It's in from the left wing, and it's in. And a timeout by Nick Novak as the lead is 11 with 16.3 to go. And the Huskies can taste it. The fans can taste it. Well, Opinga trying to get some late points here. She had to get it. She has been covered so well by Heppel. You won't see that in the stat sheet. But, uh, hey, I call her Thrippinga because she's got 102 <laughs> three-pointers on the season or on the career. Phenomenal shooter heading to Bemidji State. And she was, Heppel was on her so tight most of the game. And hence, they brought in also some additional three-point shooting with Peterson who had a few also for Anoka. But late in this game here, the Huskies, probably a free throw away, but the, this one's in hand with about 11 seconds to go in Andover, heading to a state tournament visit. And they'll take a seven game winning streak to the state tournament. And stay with us after the conclusion, we'll have the trophy ceremony and we'll have an interview with the game winning coach. Addie Winter steps onto the court here and Engelby thought about the football pass. Instead, she gives it off to Emma Frost, who immediately gets fouled two seconds off the clock. And Emma Frost can go add to her total. She's at 14 on the night. Pete, one of those critical plays was when the, when the pass went high over Iani's head. Miller had the layup. She missed the layup, but who was there? Frost. Frost is always full court type of player there in the right spot. That converted it, got it back to 10. That possession, they could have brought it back to six. And the Huskies are about to eclipse the 90 point mark here. In this game, uh, you, we talked about the scoring output of both these teams at the intro, Joe, and you said that the juice was there. We've seen it here tonight. Frecking after Frost makes both. Gets to Huffman now back to Frecking. And the respect of these two teams realizing what's at stake, what's there, and the Huskies are going to the state tournament. They're the champions of Section 7 4 -8. Congratulations, Huskies. Congratulations to Coach Nichols and his staff. Very well done. And hey, the thing mentioned also in this section championship, two teams from the Northwest Suburban Conference representing both. And uh, I'll tell you, the Huskies got out to that start. It was Frecking who got it going early inside. They stuck with that plan. The Huskies went on a run early in that second half. And that run was astounding. And that certainly gave the Huskies a lead they would never relinquish in that second half. The, the second half run opened that lead at halftime for 23 points. A lead that the Huskies would not relinquish. We're gonna keep it here also for the ceremonies, as you mentioned, Pete. So please stick with us. What an impressive night for both these. What an impressive season for Anoka as well and a job Nick Novak has done. Sounds good. As we have set here. The hugs on the the hugs on the Andover side. Joe's gonna go and prepare the interview. Leading scorer for the Huskies, Anna Voller, finishes with 28. The final, the Huskies win by a total of 13. 
a well-fought game, a well-fought second half by the Tornadoes. Able to dwindle that lead down to as many as, as little as six as admin for both schools. And the Tornadoes will get their runner-up medals and trophy first. Anoka principal Mike Farley there. Handing those off. Aubrey Anderson. The Tornado's record falls to 17 and 12 on the season, but a fantastic run here. They played Cambridge Isani in their first, their quarterfinal matchup. That was a home game. You saw that here on QCTV. And then on Saturday after, in the second semifinal, taking down the two seed in Centennial. Rapinga, as Joe mentioned, ends her career with 102 three-point shots made as a tornado. Will take that skill and that ability to Bemidji State. Couple of Peterson and underclassmen that'll return return as well. Ayeni will be back. Frecking. An outstanding softball player. Will be playing softball in college. Leads all scores here tonight with 36 for career high. Lydia Lockenin and Lily Shokneck both also getting their medals. Now getting their medals, uh, Co Coach Novak in his fifth year, getting here to the section final. His first time, he's done such a great job here at uh, Anoka. And Liberty Lockin and Maddie Frecking take the runner up. The runner up trophy back to their team where they'll now watch on as the Huskies will receive their championship medals and trophy. Being awarded by Andover Principal Tim Fine and Athletic Director Eric Leitola. Sophia Purcell coming in, getting some great minutes. Her lockdown defense on her pick it was noteworthy as her pick it went long stretches without contributing to the score sheet. Ellie Fields doing the same. Her defense, her athleticism. Making some big plays, notably a block on Maddie Frecking down low. Engleby finishing with 12 points here tonight. Emma Frost, another senior, she finished with 16. She started the hot shooting, quieted any worries of the Huskies' three-point hold streak continuing. Lacey Heppel, a welcome surprise. She finished with double digits. Morgan Miller, second leading scorer, leading rebounder for the Huskies. Anna Vall, leading scorer for the Huskies all season long.
She eclipsed the 1,000 point mark earlier this season as well as Morgan Miller. Anna finished the game with 28, including sinking clutch free throws down the stretch. This senior group for the Huskies is extremely tight, extremely close friends. You see them in the halls and around the game, around, but in the gym, before practice, after practice, before a game, after a game. Always joking and prodding at each other. Assistant Coach of the Year, Troy, co-assistant coach of the year in Section 7A, Troy Beckman and Sean Fogarty accepting their championship medals and then Blake Nichols. A big year for him. Getting to the state tournament for the first time in his tenure as head coach here at Andover. He recently eclipsed the 100 win mark. And the Huskies celebrate together as they're heading to the state tournament, it'll be at Williams Arena next week, Maturi Pavilion. And they'll get that seating announced here this Saturday. The quarterfinal games for the class 4A girls, state girls basketball will be held at Williams Arena on March 13th. And I think we're just about ready to throw it to Joe, who's going to have Coach Nichols. They're going to take a quick picture, and then Nichol, Coach Nichols will join Joe for our post-game interview. We wish nothing but congratulations to the Anoka Tornadoes for very successful season, a great run here in this section tournament. Coach Novak did an excellent job, as we mentioned, and their seniors can hold their head high as they wrap their career, their basketball career up for Anoka High School. As we wait for Nichols, Coach Nichols. Coming up on QCTV this weekend, we will have the broadcast of the boys section semifinal game. That'll be against Forest Lake at Princeton High School. That'll be Andover. And we do have Coach Nichols over with Joe. We'll throw it over. Take it away, Joe. We're at head coach Blake Nichols of the Huskies. They're heading to the state tournament. This team was on a mission 24 and four on the season. How do you define what you're feeling right now? Very proud of our kids. Um, you know, it's been, uh, for some of them, it's been five years. Our six seniors have been through a lot and uh, we know we had this as a, something we really wanted and credit to them. And uh, like I kind of said before the game to coach Anderson that Anoka was gonna be aggressive. They were gonna be scrappy. And we told our kids we would experience adversity at some point. And sure enough, we did, and give credit to Maddie Frecking. Um, played a heck of a game, just stud. Um, and, you know, they made us have to earn it, and we should have to earn it. And that's a great thing for our kids and our program. Well, you, Anoka made a run late to that second half, had a chance to maybe cut it to four, some good defensive play. But I doubt this game, a 90-77 win for you, really reflected the play of your team throughout the season. Yeah, I think for us, even though we score a lot of points and we gave up some points tonight, our defense fuels our offense. And we tried to make a Penga have to work for everything. And I thought we did a good job on that. Lacey Heppel, Sophia Purcell, Ellie Fields were outstanding on her. We're gonna need that same type of defense to be successful next week at Williams Arena. Coach, congratulations. State trip to the tournament for the Huskies. Great job. Thank you. Hi to all my family watching all across the country. Love you guys. There we go. Congratulations to the Huskies. Back to Pete. Thanks, Joe. Thank, congratulations to Coach Nichols. Congratulations to his family watching all around the country. I know he was very excited when he heard QCTV was going to be broadcasting this game live. We want to thank all of our crew, all of the work uh, back in the truck, 
Want to thank Joe for being a great uh, color commentary partner here tonight. And it's been an absolute honor bringing you this Section 7 for a championship game. Andover takes down the Tornadoes. I've been Pete Anderson for QCTV Sports. Keep your head up. Go Huskies. See you at State. This material is property of the Minnesota State High School League. No downloading, saving, or archiving of this production is permitted.